What a blessing. Are you enjoying Ida's music? You want more? All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, just to um okay. Just to come to the end of this little session here. I want to share with you about loyalty. A bit about loyalty and disloyalty. Why is loyalty important? Number one, because loyalty is the main requirement of a servant. First Corinthians chapter number four and verse two. It says, It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Am I can you hear me, everybody? Okay, good. Now it is required that a steward is found faithful. Can you read 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2 if you have your Bible? Or if you don't have your Bible, it doesn't matter. You can just get the book. I'm sharing from this book, Loyalty and Disloyalty, chapter number 1. Why loyalty? And now listen, everybody, the principal requirement for a pastor and a leader or a worker in a church is faithfulness. Why? Because the Bible says, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Now, it's a requirement. Now, let's take your car. There are things that are not required in the car. We don't need an air conditioner. We don't need a CD player. We don't need a radio. It's not required for the car to work. But you need windscreen wipers. You need lights. You need traffic gators. You need tires. Like, they are requirements. You can't do without it. But you can do without the others. Now, you have a lot of people who come and work in the church. Oh, I'm a gifted accountant. Thank you. I'm a gifted uh, pianist. Oh, thank you. I'm a gifted singer. Thank you. I'm a gifted what have you. But the requirement you should be looking for is faithfulness. Now, what does faithful mean? Faithful means loyal. It means constant. It means always there. It means no change. Now, God needs people who are not changing and who are constant, whether they are rich or whether they are poor, whether they are in apartheid or whether they are outside of apartheid, whether they are in America or whether they are in South Africa. Whether they have been in the ministry for a long time or a short time. We need faithful, constant, no change. What does that faithful mean? Loyal. Loyal, constant, no changing. The same, the same. That's the word I'm looking for. Same. Many of us pastors are not the same. You are not the same. Do you have a chair I can sit on on the stage? Is there a chair there? Oh, great. Wow. Mm. Thank you. Now, many of us are not the same. When you started out, one day I met a pastor. He was, you know, he's a powerful preacher, nice pastor. And I, I asked him, when you started out as a pastor, was a Christian, what were you, what, were, what did you hear? What were you listening to? He said, well, we listened to preaching on topics like discipleship, Christian character, loving God, serving God. So I asked him, why are you only preaching about money? Now, everything you, about you is money. Money comes, money does this. Money that, how to get money. Money, every, every topic is money. You see, God is looking for people who don't change. People who are the same. Like how you used to be when you were nobody. And how you used to be when you were a young pastor, a young Christian. You were now knowing the Lord. What you used to say, you are still preaching along the same Bible. The Bible. But look at the church today. We never had this kind of preaching we have today. Everything is a good life, happiness, joy, good marriage, nice children. 
Do you think that is the message Robert Moffat had to come to South Africa in 18 whatever? Do you think that is the message? Robert Moffat preached in, in England, in Scotland, I think it was. And David Livingston had him. Robert Moffat was sitting in a Guruman. He said, look, I can see for a thousand miles around the fires of villages, of places which have never heard of Jesus. When David Livingston heard it, he said, wow, I must give my life. He didn't preach. God wants you to have a good life. Nice family, nice uh, husband, children, prosperity in the suburbs. You are going to move out of the township. You are going to live in a beautiful house. Glory to God. You drive a hammer and drive a Mercedes Benz. If that was the message they had, they wouldn't have come here. Because even though there are different dangers today, there were very serious dangers in those days. In those days, they were not afraid of human beings. They were afraid of lions. No, in those days, the danger was lions. Today, the danger is humans. Yes. <laughs> the danger today is humans. The danger then was lion. David Livingston was attacked in Kuruman by a lion. And the lion bit his shoulder and he had a problem with his arm till he died. But he was saved by one of the natives shot the lion. Do you think he had message of God is giving you the message of abundance? Abundance. 25 keys to abundance. Success without limits. Wonderful from the Lord. Happy life today. Happy life tomorrow. Do you think that this is what they had? We are not faithful. We are not the same. We are very different, I'm telling you. From how we started out, we have changed. We have changed. Our message has, is so transformed. You can't even recognize what we are talking about. We are ashamed. We are ashamed to Christianity. It is under our water the church has declined. Look, I'm going to recommend a book to you, okay? I didn't write it, but I want you to get it. Will you get it? Should I bother to recommend it to you? Will you get it? It's called The Final Quest by Rick Joyner. Final Quest by Rick Joyner. When you get that book, open to the chapter, uh, well, there are different chapters, but the very good chapter is the, um, called The White Throne. But at the end of the book, Right, he meets Apostle Paul. Can you imagine going to heaven and meeting Apostle Paul? How many would like to see Paul? He chatted with Paul, shook hands with him, and all that. Wow. Then, as he was going, he, he asked Paul, He asked Paul, Is there anything you'd like to tell us on earth? How many want to know what Paul said? Paul said, I have nothing to say because I've said it already. Read my letters. Then, just as he was going, Paul changed his mind and said, well, I can tell you one thing. How many want to know the one thing that Paul said? Only 18 people. So see me after church. I'll see them. How many want to know what Paul said? It's in the book. Go and read it. But Paul said to him, Paul said to him, we in heaven, when we are watching you guys on earth, we are not able, listen, this is Paul, we are not able to recognize the ministry and the message you people have. We don't understand it. We don't recognize what you are talking about. So, he said, you don't recognize what you don't recognize. I said we don't recognize the ministry and we don't recognize the message. So he asked for please, <laughs> what do you mean? What does it mean you don't recognize the ministry? He said, when we were pre preachers, the message and the ministry was a message 
and the ministry of sacrifice. Sacrifice. That was all. And he said, apart from a few spots on the earth, we cannot recognize what you guys are talking about. Heaven is not in approval of the kind of messages that we are preaching. It's all about happiness, have a good life, be happy, prosper, get this, get that, be safe. Because it leads to the destruction of the church. It removes the power from the church. Those who stay at home are supposed to be the support base for those who are going out. We have a message and a mission to go into all the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But no, we don't do that. Now, I see God blessing you. One, one pastor went out preaching and a prophetic anointing came upon him. Then he started pointing out people. He said, you, I see you as my missionary in California. And the brother stood up and said, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Then he walked to another place and said, you, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He says, you are going to be my missionary in Paris, France. The brother stood up and said, Jesus, thy will be done. Then he walked across to another person and said, Shada Kabila Sotal Ibal Hatas Alba Kalbalura. You are going to be my missionary in Copenhagen. The brother said, Jesus, Copenhagen, let it be done. Then he turned to another brother and said, Iba Shaba Kotalaba. You are going to be my missionary in Togo. And the brother stood up and said, in the name of Jesus, I refuse that word. Togo, I cast that word in the name of Jesus. Satan, get thee behind me. What is Togo? What is Togo? Satan, I bind your power now in Jesus' name. I will never go to Togo. I reject that word. Never. Some have been sent to California and to Paris. I should go to Togo. You will lie bad. Satan, you are a liar. Hey! You, you are being sent. Somebody is going to Copenhagen. Somebody is going to California. Somebody is going to uh, where? Paris. And me, you are sending me to Togo. What do you mean? In Jesus' name, I fight that word. I block that flame in Jesus' name. I block it. You have now become a blocker of flames. You see how we have become in the church? Yeah, nobody wants to go. Where the souls are, nobody wants to go. Where there is money, we will go. California, there's money. Michael Jackson is there. Oprah Winfrey, those people, they are all there. Where there is money, Copenhagen, Paris, France, Chanel, perfume, this, yes. We'll go there. But Togo, Tofiakwa, in the name of Jesus, I refuse that word. Pass over me, Satan. I block your words. But you didn't block the word to Copenhagen. You didn't block it. That is us today. We are not faithful. We are not faithful. We are not faithful. The word that God has given us, go, 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 go. No, we are not like that anymore. We, are, we have changed the message. And so God is looking for faith. It is required. You know, many years ago, I came into contact with Kenneth Hagen. Last time I calculated how old Kenneth Hagen was. Don't be angry that I keep mentioning somebody's name. Because you don't mention somebody's name, that's why no one will ever mention your name. No one will ever mention until you die. You no one will ever mention. You have no father. You have no. Allow me to freely mention the person who has been a blessing to me. Don't be jealous and envious, please. So one day I was thinking about Kenneth Hagen. I said, How old was Kenneth Hagen when I, I first encountered him? Do you know how, he, how, old, how old he was? He was 63 years old. And I was thinking to myself, if. By the age of 63, he has changed his message from what he used to preach. 
and now he's now become a motivational speaker like a lot of pastors have become motivational or they have joined ANC and are now political activists. If Kenneth Hagin had joined the ANC and become a political activist saying the same different political way instead of preaching the original calling, where would I be? I would, at the 63, I was already 20 something years, I, I would not have found, I heard something wonderful because he has changed it. That is why I don't like people, familiarity around me when I'm preaching. Because each group I go to, they have to hear what I have to say. I don't, you, I don't like telling, do you think I enjoy telling the same stories over and over and over again, listening to people that are, this, this is my work. And if, you, if, you, if your familiarity will force me to stop saying the actual message I have to preach and say something else, when the people have to hear, have to be faithful to what I'm supposed to say. That's why I don't like when I'm preaching, people talking, moving around, chatting. I don't want to see that at all. Those people should not be in my presence. They should be out of, they will force me to change what I'm saying. So that I say something new that will be new to them. And I'm not here to say something new. I'm here to say what God has asked me to say. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about faithfulness. The wonderful pioneers of we have had, if we were faithful to what they originally started preaching, I tell you, you'll be so surprised how changed we would be. But we are not faithful. And that's why Bible says it is required. It is a requirement in stewards that a man should be faithful, the same, loyal, don't change. We have changed so much. Sometimes people preach, you wonder, is this a bank manager who is talking? I mean, is, he, is he a politician? Is he a, what is he? What are you? You are a motivational speaker. Motivational nonsense can never compare with the word of God. Motivational nonsense can never compare with the word of God. Number two. Loyalty is important to fight the fifth column. What is the fifth column? One day a commander had an army. All right. And he was going to invade a city. And he had four battalions. And a young man came to him and said, how are you going to invade this city? He said, I'm going to use the fifth column. He said, what's the fifth column? He said, oh, my fifth column, I have four columns outside, but I have a fifth column inside. I have somebody inside. I have some guys inside. Satan doesn't use outsiders to work on us. He uses insiders. Anybody who's been a pastor for some time, the greatest troubles you have had are not from outsiders. True or not true? <laughs> greatest trouble? You see them sitting in the church. Fifth column. Demons sitting on their shoulders. Looking at you with cynical eyes. Never say amen people. Never agree. Never yield. Never give up. Never understand. And they are sitting there. Hey! <laughs> you need to learn how to deal with insiders. If you are ever going to. Because you have to cure the disease inside before you can, you can ever grow. Hey! Give me five loyal people rather than 50 confused Disgruntled people. I prefer those five people in my church than 50 people who are always talking about me behind my back. When I started a church, hey, you know, I was a new young pastor. No one knew me as a pastor. And uh, I came one day you know, one, one morning, one first January in the morning, I felt 
God wanted me to be a pastor. So I came to the fellowship that I started, and I told them that from today, I'm no more Brother Dag. Can you imagine that? I am now Pastor Dag. Hey! That's how I became a pastor. Because I felt God told me to carry on and be a pastor and start a church. So when I came to the church, and I started preaching then, there were people going on, then there started to be rumblings. Everybody say rumblings. Hey! They, they used to talk about me. You see, the main concern with me was whether God had called me. This was the big issue. Like, has, have you been called by God or not? They wanted to be sure. They were not sure. Now, I believe God had called me. <laughs> but they were not sure. They, hey, they used to discuss me. They were talking about me all the time. Hey. I don't even know how, how did I know they were talking about me, but I knew there were meetings about me. A young pastor with a small church in a classroom. Hey. Now I began to be afraid in the church. Like on Saturdays, when Sunday was coming, I become more afraid. Because Sunday is coming. And I say I'm a pastor. I didn't even have suits in those days. I didn't have suits. I went to make a suit because I was now a pastor. So I my father was very happy. I never liked wearing suits, and I still don't like. But I told my father, please, I need a suit. And he was so happy. I said, yeah, I need a suit now. I really need a suit. I'm, I'm a pastor. So he, 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 he got me three suits. Gray, uh, gray and dark, one, different three. And I put on with my tie. And I, kept, I said, I'm a pastor. they were talking about me. He's called. He's not called. He preaches the way he walks around. He doesn't stay in one place. He doesn't use enough scriptures. He uses too many scriptures. He tells too many stories. He doesn't tell enough jokes. Different things. And now on Saturdays, I began to have running stomach diarrhea at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturdays. Now, I tell you, I didn't know that anxiety causes diarrhea. I didn't know. I, I've not even read it in the medical book. I experienced it practically. I don't need to read it. I, I know it. So I told my wife, she was not my wife, then. she was my friend. My wife has been my friend from school. I told her, look, you know, is this what's going to happen to me in the future? Because I'm going to be a pastor like every Saturday for the rest of my life. I'm going to have a running stomach. Yeah. One day I read a verse, shall I say. I read a verse in the Bible. But you see, what happened was I had a dream. In the dream, I was a boxer. Yes, a real boxer with red shorts. And my opponent was wearing blue shorts. And in the dream, it came clang, and we started fighting. Hey, we fought and fought and fought, clang, round two, fighting. Red short, black boots. And I, I don't like boxing. I don't, it's not something I watch. So it was a divine dream revelation. Now, if you, I was always watching boxing, you can understand this dream is from the films I'm watching. But this one, out of the blue, I was a boxer. Hey, and do you know who the other boxer was? The boxer was a lady who used to sing before I preach. Like how this one sang, there was somebody before. And before I preach, I'll call her. She will sing. Some guy will come and play the guitar and they'll sing. And the girl was boxing. When I got up, ah, 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 ah. The said, this girl is fighting you. I said, wow. Alongside with Alta, my right hand man, my assistant. The one who introduces me to preach. The one who takes over after I preach. 
So one day, I was in my, in my room, and then I opened the Bible and I saw this verse. You know, God speaks you through the Bible. Proverbs, read it. 22 verse 10. Proverbs. Proverbs 22 verse 10. What does it say? Cast out the scorner. Cast out the devil. Cast out the demons. Cast out the dragons. Cast out the serpents. Cast out the what? The scorner. Scorner. The mocker. And what will happen? And contention shall go out. Contention, quarreling, shall go, go out. out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. Strife and reproach shall cease. When I read this verse, and in French, this, this scripture casts out the corner. In French, it says, Chasse le moqueur. Everybody say, Chasse le moqueur. Hey. So I called for a meeting. I said, all the leaders should come to my room. And they all came. I said, sit down. Sit down, all of you. And I said, I have a message for you. From today, you, I pointed to my right hand man, you are out of the church. What? I said, you are out. I am sacking you as my assistant and I'm sacking you from the whole church. What? He said, why? I said, because you are always criticizing me, talking about me, whatever. He said, oh, no, no. And he said, look, if you don't want me to announce, to speak, to do whatever, I can still be in the church. I said, look, I do not want you in the church, in the presence of this church. Again, go out of the church. Chasse le moqueur! Chasse le moqueur! I asked him to go out and that was the last day he ever came to the church. He went out. When he went out, trouble went with him, criticism went with him, Reproach went with him. All the backbiting, the, all the people, because they all followed. You see, that's why during the crusade, I said, don't go out because it makes others go. You're going fools a group with you out who maybe have not intended to leave. So when this guy left, all those people, including the singer and all, they all went. Yeah. And from that day, 1988 till today, we, were, we, we became smaller. But you see, I would rather have a small loyal group than a big group of confusion. From that day, we now started to grow and build up from a little group. And I've had the same, when he walked out, my assistant, who is staff till today, he's my right-hand man all these years, all these years. He his wife, his children, we are, we are all a family. We have been together from that day up till today. We are the same group. No change. Chasse. Some of you, you are afraid of the orangus and the rebels in your church. You are wiser than God. This is all I want to say. You are greater than God. Because God cast out Lucifer and you are giving him advice. You are calling for meetings with Lucifer. Lucifer, can you come for some discussions? Luciferic discussions so that we can go through the issues. Chasse le moqueur! Chasse le moqueur! Chasse le moqueur! You must learn to chasse le moqueur. Are you still here or you are leaving? You know? And it's not only assistant pastors, but even people in the congregation. You must learn to chasse le moqueur. 
One day, a, a lady came to see me in my office. And uh, she was one of my church members. So she told me her problem. And I said, okay. I said, let us pray. So I said, Father. And I began to pray for her powerfully. Then in the middle of the prayer, something said to me, open a little part of your eye. sitting there looking at me like that. As I was father, I Jesus. She was just looking at me like that. So I closed the small part of my eye back and I finished. The prayer became shorter. <laughs> All my prayer was shorter. So I said, I finished the prayer. Then I said, Amen. Amen. Then I asked her, do you believe in the prayer that I prayed? Do you know what she said? She said, no. And I could see because I had already opened my eyes that she did not believe. So, I said to her, from today, go to another church. Shasele Moke. I said, I said, you don't believe in my anointing. You don't believe in my prayers. When I was praying, you have opened your eyes. You are looking at me, mocking me. And I gave her the address of another church to go to. I told her, you see this church, go there. And she went. That was the last day I saw. I've never seen her again in my life. Chassele Moke. Chassele Moke. Sometimes you need a purgative. You know, purgative. Yeah, to make you go to the toilet. To flush out elements. Not everything is supposed to stay. Some must come out. Chassele Moke. Whatever represents a mocha in your life. Today I decree that mocha is sacked from your life in the name of Jesus. Whatever laughs at you and mocks at you and makes fun of you in your heart, in their heart, today I declare they shall be found no more. Chasse le Hey! Are you still around? Yeah. Number three. You need, oh, I'll give you only one, two. One, I'm talking about why loyalty, and I'm preaching from the first chapter of this book, Loyalty and Disloyalty. Chapter one, why loyalty is important. Make sure when we close, you get your Macarius library, and the different things that there are, don't joke with it. It is a blessing. God is giving you light. Arise. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, it's enough. I finished preaching. So all this is not part of the preaching. Arise. Shine. Why? Why? What has come? What has come? Light. 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 That's the law of light. The law of light. When light comes, your shining begins. That's what God is bringing to you now. Light. Wow. Number three. Number one is you need a loyalty. Why loyalty? Because what? Because what? Because it's a principal qualification, isn't it? For a pastor. Number two, 
You need loyalty to fight the fifth column. That's what I've been talking about all this time. Number three, you need loyalty for the love of God to fill the church. Amen. Let there be love shed amongst us. Let there be love in our hearts. And may this love sweep this nation. Cause us, O Lord, to arise. Give us a fresh, give us a fresh understanding for brotherly love that is real. Let there be love. When people come to the church and you are quarreling, the pastor is quarreling with his assistant, the pastor is quarreling with his wife. The big uh, rich man in the church is quarreling. He's saying, I don't like the way he preached yesterday. Uh, he alluded to me and uh, my family. And I, and because I'm the only one in the church who does pineapple business. And he mentioned something about pineapple, whatever. And I don't like that comment. And, and what is this nonsense? What is this nonsense? We need peace. Sheep drink out of still waters. When the sheep comes to the water and he sees something moving, he says, hey, something is wrong here. We have too many wicked people in the church who leave the church and when they leave, they, they muddy the waters. Everybody is afraid of the church. Some of you people can't join the church because of what somebody has said about you. Hey, some of the guys who left, what they said about you, look, when you hear yourself, Benny he told me, he said, when I hear them talking about me, I don't know whether it is me they are talking about. You, you can't even believe, is it, is it me they are talking about? Am I the one in this story? Some people, when they are leaving the church, maybe they sit in church here, eh, like how you are sitting here, the last thing they do when they get up, they sit there and say, I've, I've decided I'm leaving this church. They get up and they go. And they come. They do it in the spiritual. But I'll do it in the physical. They come to the church. And then they we we here. More than even the normal we we. They we we. Oh. Then, then they leave the church. They say, damn this church. And they go. It's in Ezekiel 34. You see this exact. He said, you drank the waters and you muddied the rest. Now, anytime somebody comes to the church and sits here, he says, I smell something wrong here. It is because of the guy who left when he was leaving. That was the last thing he did. He wee-weed on the carpet. Would this place not be smelling if somebody wee-weed here? It will smell terrible. And you will always have a, everybody in the fair will be thinking, you know, there's something wrong, you know. Something wrong here. I mean, we have air condition. And, and then when they say, there's something wrong, you ask, what is wrong? So there's something wrong. You know, this brother left. Yeah. He told me a proverb before he left. Really? What proverb did he tell you? He said, when a crocodile comes from under the water and tells you that there is a snake there, you have to believe him. And that he is the crocodile who used to be in the church and has come out of the church and he's telling you that there is a snake in the church. Wow. He said, I don't want to say much about the pastor because it was my church, but I tell you, only God can reveal to you. Something is not correct. Do you have such things in South Africa? It's in Ezekiel 34. We go yes. home and read it. Ah, you want to read it? Yeah, you can read it. Ezekiel 34, verse 18. Wow. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture. You had the good pasture. You were sitting in front of the church here eating the good pasture. But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pasture. You want to spoil the rest? You tread down the residue? 
and to have drank of the deep waters. You drank of the deep waters in this church? But ye must foul the residue with your feet. You must foul the residue of the water. Look, if you want to live, live and live quietly. You don't believe in us, go. This is the door. We all got of doors in the church. Here is one. Here is two. Three. Where? Doors everywhere. We have doors. Just walk out. Don't sit here and criticize. You don't like my crusade, don't come. You don't like my pastor's comment, don't come. Don't sit here and foul the waters and foul with your comments and your negative words. Chassel Mokai. That's how they do it. Away. 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 Chassel et moquer. Hey. And when, when they are leaving, some of these people, you must escort them to ensure they to ensure that they don't win in the church. Hey! Don't let them have any free moments. Yes, escort them out quickly. One guy, he told me, he, he, God has told him to leave. He's going to leave in some years time. I told him, today is the day you are leaving now. You are leaving now, now. I should let this guy stay here for another five years. He's going to win me in the whole church. Chassele Moka. Chassele Moka. Chassele Moka. Wow. Hey. First reason for loyalty being important is one. Because what? It's a principal qualification for ministers. Required is to that a man be found faithful. Number two is because we are fighting the fifth column. Number three, so that you can have uh, love in the church. Amen. Because sheep only drink out of peaceful, loving places. And number four, so that you can have a large, mega ministry. Amen. Because you can't, you can't expand. Some of you cannot leave your churches for even one Sunday. Hey, if you leave for one Sunday, that person that you leave there, he will say, my God and my Lord, this is the day I have been waiting for. <laughs> when he climbs up to the pulpit, he will lift up a song. A, a song of power. Anointing. And he will say, to, today anointing has come. You have been eating brown grass for many years. Today you shall eat green grass. Hey. Some people I tell you, if you leave them for one side, they want to prove something. Just one service. By the time you come back, you can't recognize your church. Some of them will even start having miracles during the Sunday service. They'll start. I see somebody blind. Fire is coming out of my fingers. Wow. I tell you. Whatever the senior pastor doesn't do on Sunday, they will do it. And they will tell you that today, God is giving you water to drink. I know you are thirsty. Today your thirst will be quenched. All brown grass is over today. <laughs> today is a day of the green tree. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Hey. And finally, so that you hear your re you hear the beautiful reward. You hear that those words one day from Jesus. Well done. That's the last reason why you must have loyalty. So that you, you hear those words. Well done. Good and what? Good and 
good and constant servant. Good and faithful. Yes, good and faithful, which means constant. Good, good and servant who didn't change his message. Some of you, you are assistant of the pastor when he is uh, nobody. When he becomes big, you stop assisting. Yes. Some of you, you, you assist when, you know, at the beginning, but at a point, when you become a big businessman. Uh, oh, I, I, I cannot go over. You used to lift your hand and pray, but now you are, you are rich. You don't come to church no more. You change. You are, you are not good and constant. You are good and not constant. Good and not, not the same. You're just not the same. You're just different from how you started. Hey. Today God is giving you a spirit of loyalty. Spirit of faithfulness. Spirit of constantness. Receive the ability. When you are 70 years old, you see that you are the same. You've not changed and backslidden and modified. And God has given you the grace to be a faithful person in the ministry. Faithful to your pastor. Faithful to the work you are being called to do. Yeah. You know, one day, a pastor from, uh, actually from South Africa, he called me. He said, uh, one of my church members is coming to Ghana. I said, who is that? He said, he's a multi-millionaire, one of the richest men in Africa. I said, wow. He said, I said, wow, wonderful. What is he coming to do? He said, oh, he's going to be around, but I want him to come to your church on Sunday. Then, you know, when he looked at me, I think he sort, sort of felt my face was not so excited. Then he said, no, I know what you are thinking. You think that, you know, because he's a rich man, he's not going to come to church. He said, this is a different time. He said, this time, wherever he is, Sunday, he will go to church. He's one of the, either the richest or one of the richest men. You see, many rich men, when they became rich, no more church. They are not able to stay constant. You should have seen them when they were walking in the church praying. Oh God, bless me. Oh Jesus. When they pray, as if they are throwing short put. Hey. Prayer. Fasting. Now that God has blessed them, they are drinking champagne. Instead of listening to worship music, you alone are worthy. They are now listening to Mozart. They used to be listening. They used to be singing worship songs. There is none like you. That's what they used to sing. But now. You listen to their cousin. What are you listening to? So, this is the music of a prosperity. Somebody who has prospered. My class, we listen to Mozart, Schumann, Bach, Beethoven. Indeed. 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 God is looking for people that will not... You are rich and so what? You can still... Man, if I was to say that I am rich or I am poor, why would I go to certain places to preach? There are places I go, there's no water. There's no water to bath. There's no toilet. There's no this. There's no that. I know how to sleep in expensive hotels. I've slept everywhere that you can sleep. I've been everywhere. I've been everywhere. You think I don't know how to eat uh, bacon and eggs? But you go where there is nothing like that. So I can't, I can't stay without my fresh, my fresh juice. Indeed. You can stay with your freshly, freshly squeezed juice. Nonsense. <laughs> Look, let us be down to earth. Uh, the Bible says, don't mind high things. Just condescend to men of low estate. Many pastors have forsaken the townships of South Africa. You have left the townships to demons. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You have left it for them. The black, when you have small blessing, small prosperity, you move out of there. Fine, if you want to move. But ministry, you, you will not see a, a pastor walking through the township, talking to these people. They've been left to evil spirits to lead them on. And destroy them. It's true. Is it not true? Yeah. And when you were nothing, 
When you were small in your own eyes, God would send you to all those places. But now you are the man of God. Man of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey. Stand to your feet. Our time is up. Wow. Hallelujah. All right. Ha. Ah. Are you tired? You're not tired. Wow. Fantastic. You see that preaching can go on longer than 30 minutes, isn't it? Many of our new type of churches, 30 minutes, 35 minutes. Stop talking. 35 minutes. So our people cannot stand. Our people. Lift your hand and thank the Lord for his blessing. Let's keep praying, lift your hands and pray and talk to God. Pray about your ministry, your life, your calling. Pray and ask God for strength, for strength to defend the church, to build the church, to grow the church, to love the church, to be the shepherd God called you to be. Pray. My God, be my son, dele my calabasa.
Haleluya. Thank you, Jesus. Arise. Shine, my servant. Shine, shine, shine. For light is come. Thy 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 light is come. Arise. Shine. 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 Shine, thy light is come, thy light is come. For it shall come to pass that you shall see that there is no need to keep in your camp Lucifer or his agents, which are sent to discourage you, which are sent to belittle you, which are sent to detract from you. Today I have shown you how to fight. Therefore, begin to contend in battle with the enemy that seeks to dispossess you and belittle you. Through the ministry of blasphemy, they have made you into nothing. But you are not nothing. You are something wonderful and great. Somebody anointed that I called and raised up. Therefore, arise and cast out the scorner. Arise and cast out the mockers. And press on towards the mark of the high calling. For I've called you to much greater things. You need not be distracted to the left and to the right. For you must build for me a mighty church, a mega church. For there are many that stand here today that shall be pastors of great congregations. Oh, you shall shepherd, you shall lead, you shall be a great guide and a light to many. Therefore, arise and fulfill your calling. Make full proof of your ministry. For there is nothing that I have said to you that you cannot do. For what I have spoken to you, you can do. What I have shown you, you can do. It is not above you or beyond you. It is within your reach. Therefore, step into it, my servant. Step ahead into the will, to the plan, the purpose that I have for you. For I shall raise you up a mighty tree. The beds of the earth shall come and rest upon your branches. Many shall experience the oil and the ointment that comes. For out of your belly shall flow new rivers of oil and anointing. Out of your belly. For this day I have given you a new fresh anointing. This day I have given you a new fresh anointing. This day I have given you a new fresh anointing. This day I have given you a new fresh, 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 fresh. Yay! This is what the Spirit says. Stay together. Don't split up. Don't separate. For two are better than one. For as you stand together, you shall be anointed ten thousand times more. But one shall put it to a flight a thousand, but two shall put to flight ten thousand. Ah, I have multiplied the gifts upon your life. I have increased the oil upon your vessel. Yea, you shall not be barren. You shall not be empty. You shall not lack fruit. For I see harvest fields filled with fruits. Filled with fruits. What fruits are these? What trees are these? These are the trees, the planting of the Lord. What trees are these? These are my fruit-bearing trees. Ah, the flicker, my olive trees. For I've planted you an olive tree. I've planted you a fruit-bearing tree. Yea, the planting of the Lord. You shall bear fruit. You shall bear much fruit. For it shall come to pass in the day of the early rain and the latter rain that your fruit will mature. Ah, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed are the great fruits that come forth from the field. For much fruit is determined upon your life. Much fruit is determined. Much fruit. Much fruit. Arise for much fruit. This is the fruit you shall bear before you shall lie down and sleep. This is the fruit you shall bear before your life will be over. This is the fruit you shall bear within the grace I shall give to you. Ah, I see a huge field. 
with trees. What kind of trees? Many trees, similar trees. And they are all going to bear fruits. Wonderful fruit that is fruit unto the Lord. Therefore, walk on my servant. You are one of those plantings of the Lord that is determined to bear much fruit. You will bear much fruit. You will be one of those great trees. Shala de amana masanda labaga. Barrenness and whatever represents barrenness is declared cancelled in your life today. I release you. I release you a surprise. I release you as a surprise to your communities. You are released this day a surprise to your family, a surprise to your community, a surprise to your church, a surprise to all those that know you. You are released a surprise this day. You are released. For men shall be surprised when they see you walking. For they knew not that you were an olive tree, the planting of the Lord. Lacre omon anesemona. Now let your roots go deeper. Let your roots go deeper. For you have tasted only the shallow waters. But there are depths and deeper waters. La kilo kilo olomale tamabalo sandele. Deeper waters, deeper waters, deeper waters. Shebeleme seba, shebeleme. I release you. The surprise of the year, the surprise of your family, the surprise of your community, the surprise of South Africa. You are released to surprise. La fata la basobo la makebala dala. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior. Of the world let grace find you and let the fulfillment of your calling and your ministry be established in the mighty name of Jesus Amen be blessed be blessed be blessed be blessed be blessed you know, in the Bible, the Bible said there were two prophets. And the Lord said, these are my two olive trees. And my two candlesticks. Today God is releasing you as an evergreen tree. A tree destined to bear much fruit. Your, your stem is not very thick. The people are not expecting much from you. Therefore, the Lord releases you as a surprise to the world. You are released as a surprise to the community and as a surprise to your nation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. May you be an everlasting candlestick. May your light never be put out by man or by woman or by any power that is on earth or under the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Thanks, Lord. Be magnified in the lives of your servants. Never the same again. We give you praise. We give you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. Give the Lord a shout and a clap offering.
in this pastor's conference. Wow, what a blessing. Now listen, before we end, um, I want us to, I, I, I don't know if you took an offering yesterday, envelopes, yeah. But I want also to give my own envelopes. I want to really ask some of us here to sow a seed, especially into the ministry and from your ministry. Amen. So buy petrol for us from here to Newcastle, which is about almost 500 kilometers away with all these cars and trucks. We don't want your money. We just a seed of petrol. Amen. God bless a couple of places we've been. We've had pastors sowing seed and say, we are filling your, your um, tanks for you. That is a blessing. Is it not a blessing? Learn to, learn, it's part of the things we, we need to do in the ministry. When you appreciate something, you sow a seed. The Bible says in Galatians 6, it's, let him that is taught in the word communicate to him that teacheth. 
in all good things. Amen. So I want to give some envelopes out tonight. Yes, be magnified. And um, you are here, and you want to say, Mr. Pastor Man, Mr. Evangelist, I want to listen to what you are saying, and I want to sow a special seed. Maybe you already took an envelope, but you want to say, look, I want to give again, either from you or from your church. Or you want to just even buy. You can go to the petrol station, pay for us, so come and fill your tank here. Some people did that for us. That's a blessing. Is it not a blessing? Has Healing Jesus campaign been a blessing to Clex Stop? Yes. Doctor, if you go down, anybody who wants to take one of my envelopes, come. Come and take. That's a special seed you want to sow. Maybe you've taken already. Come for. I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh Lord, forgive me. And I have believed in a lie that you were unable to help. Nothing. 
announcement as you are giving your offerings. I want to advertise our podcast. Podcast. Say podcast. What is a podcast? If you go on your phone, if you have an iPhone, you have the um, podcast is already on it. It's one of the apps. If you don't have an iPhone, you have the other type of phone, Samsung and so on. You have to go to Google Play Store where they buy apps and you get a, an, app, an app called Podcast Addict. Okay? Are you listening? You go to the podcast, uh, you go to the store and buy, you don't buy it free. Now, when you get Podcast Addict or Podcast in an iPhone, you search for my name, Doug Heward Mills. When you search for my name, it will show you my podcast. Now, my podcast has three types. So you just say, do, it will ask you, do you want it? Everything say yes. Look, those of us who were born before technology, let me tell you, the secret is everything, just say yes. Anything, just press, just keep pressing and it comes to the right place. You get what I'm saying? Are you with me? Now, if you do that, it comes to a podcast which says my name, and there's another one which says that you are the pastor's conference. Now, all the preaching of today is going to be on the podcast, and it's free. And it comes to your phone, including the music Ida is singing, everything. It just, it just, arrives, it just arrives on your phone. You will not buy, you don't have to buy like as you've come for the conference, oh, I wish I could have the audio or I wish I could listen to it again. It comes on the podcast and it's free. There's nothing that I'm saying that costs you even one rand. You just need your phone and this type of new modern phones they have, iPhone or any of these newfangled phones they have. And look for, if it's iPhone, look for podcast. If it's Samsung or, or the other one, look for the Google Play Store. There's a Google Play Store. That is where you buy things. Okay? So you find it's on your thing. You see Google Play Store. Then search inside. There's a small magnifier that you press it. When you want to search for something, you press it. It means search. Then when you search, you search for podcast addict, like a drug addict. But you are not a drug addict. You are a podcast addict. When you get the podcast addict, if you say, do you want it? Everything, always yes, yes, I like it, want it then it will come on your phone. When it comes on your phone, the podcast addict or the podcast, then you set for my name. My name is D-A-G, Dark Heward Mills. Then you set for Dark Heward Mills. Then it comes, Dark Heward Mills podcast, three types. It's Sunday, normal Sunday preaching. Then we have pastors' conferences and then crusades. So you can have all the three. And it appears on your phone. You don't have to do anything. to just show one. It means one has come. Is it not correct? What I'm saying, is it true? Yeah. So it's now free. So this, I started preaching at 8 o'clock. It's almost 2 o'clock. I've been preaching for almost 6 hours. So all this here, it's coming on your thing. You, it, so in the olden days, you have to buy 6 CDs. 1 CD is how much? In rands. 100 rands. 100 rands for one. So for, to get this, you have to pay 600 rands. But now you are not paying anything if you just have a phone. And how many don't have a, a good phone for what I'm saying? Father, send phones by angels. Receive new phones in Jesus' name. And the new phones that you get is not for watching pornography, but it's for listening to podcasts. How many are going to get the podcast? And even if you don't have a phone, because you want to get the podcast, God is going to send his angel to bring you a phone. And you are going to have the phone. So please do this podcast because it's all for your benefit. Why would I be saying this? It's for you to be blessed. A lot of people are uh, enjoying free preaching. Look, we used to buy tapes, CDs. It was a big expense. But now, and on your phone, you just, I have so much preaching. I have hundreds of preaching messages on my phone. This is what I used to listen to messages now, my phone. Because it's so loud. And I can change, I can play so many things. Oh, different, different, different things. I have loaded down apart from podcast. So I don't see, and if I am over 50 years old, 
I don't know how to do this, what all these things I'm saying. If I'm able to explain it, then it means you can do it. Because I've never had a computer before, even a laptop. I've never owned one before. I've never used it before. I was born before the technology started. I am a BBT. But I am fighting to be a young person, amen, who can understand technology. So please, everybody should try, get your podcast, catch up, and search for it. Over here, are you going to do it? That's the So ask your neighbor, if you were confused, ask your neighbor, say, I was confused when the man was talking. Can you explain it again to me? And your neighbor is going to explain it again. Amen. Clap your hands and welcome Dr. Ogo. Don't forget the Macarius Library is here. That is a blessing. And please don't forget these, my three very latest and very popular sought after books are The Good General, What It Means to Be As Wise as a Serpent, and The Anointed and His Anointing. But these three are three books that came after this Macarius. Was, and you can see they are a bigger size. So they don't fit in. So you have to get these ones separately if you want them. Amen. But it's a blessing. Thank you very much for being so patient to stay here all this time. God bless you all. Thank you. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Let's appreciate evangelist that you are males for this another dose of God's guidance impartation direction don't you feel fresh as a, as a pastor don't you have a sense of freshness a sense of hope that it will work that things will change yes if you came in here hopeless hope has come to you Let's appreciate evangelists like God Mills once again for the priceless blessing we have received. Amen. And I think what we need to really do is to get the podcast on our phones. That one will be a very major step you will take towards catching the anointing and towards receiving keys of wisdom. Luke 11.52. Keys. Amen. So I want to kindly ask you to get the podcast and also many of you have already acquired the library. Please do your best to get it. If you want any information on the Africans books, please, if you go to the book desk, you are going to get that information. Africans, these, these ones are in English. They are also Africans titles. And I think it is also going to be a blessing to you. Some of the cop, um, uh, books I in. So I want us to, God bless you for the special seats you sold. But let's give our offering now. Please eat, tell your neighbor that it's offering time. Let's take out our offerings, look into your bag, your pockets. And let's, these, these, these envelopes we brought are special seats, covenants. You are, you are made with God, with special seats. We are giving our offering for the conference. So please, wherever you are, look into your pocket, your wallet, and bring out a good offering. I believe God is going to bless us all as we live here. We will not be the same again. Yes, those of you who do not have the apps on your phone, or you don't have a smartphone, you need to buy the CD physically. It's 20 rand for the um, the crusade, the two nights, and then also the pastors' conferences. The CDs are fifty. Uh, the DVDs, the videos, DVDs are fifty rands, and the CDs are twenty rands. But I will say again that the crusade preaching and everything they are all on the podcast. There's one podcast all for only crusades, healing Jesus crusades campaigns, and there's a podcast for pastors' conferences, and there is a podcast for church services. So, uh, some of you may not need to buy it, because if you have the application or the app, you have the um, Dark Word Mails podcast, there was no need to buy, unless you want to you know, give a gift, send somebody a CD. So, it's 20 rand. 
please let's lift up our offerings and pray as the announcements come so we don't keep too long here. Father, we ask for your blessing upon the seeds and the offerings and the givings. We believe your word that it is more blessed to give. So we believe that as we are rather giving to healing Jesus' crusade, we are even more blessed than what we are receiving from the crusade, for the campaign. Touch our lives. Make us better ministers because we give towards your anointed. Let this seed create a new world, a new island, a new realm, a new dimension, a new day, a new horizon, a new ministry. That is our faith as we give. In Jesus' name, amen. Ashes, please be fast. There's a gentleman standing with the offering bag. I, I wonder what you are doing standing there. Please move and let's take the offering. This shouldn't take more than two minutes. And uh, please don't forget that when you get your Macarius library for 900 rand, the original price is about 6,000 rand. But if you, if you get it for 900 rand, remember that the evangelist is yet blessing you with the loyalty collection. It, it comes with it. This alone is $100. But he's adding it. What a blessing. For 900 rand. So make sure you don't just carry your Macarius library away, but demand the loyalty collection. It's a part of it. And it's going to be a blessing to you. But apart from the loyalty collection, there are other very powerful um, products. And I'm sure you know that these are all USBs. USBs. Containing huge volumes of messages. Compressed. So it's just been packaged very nicely. This is the charisma. Messages on the anointing. Many, 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 many messages on the anointing. It's going to be a great blessing to you. Make sure you are quiet. The Makane Ion is Ion Sharpnet Ion Conferences or Pastors Conferences as we are having now, which have been put together over the years. It's going to be a great blessing to you. The Makane Extra also comes. Actually, it's a continuation of the Makane. And they are all a great blessing. I'm told that the loyalty collection is finished because of the volumes which have gone. So, the evangelist, instead of the loyalty collection, he's adding the charisma, charisma to the Macarius. Just to replace, but you are, so you are going to get the charisma, teachings on the anointing, which I believe will be even a great blessing to you. Amen. And this is a very, very beautiful um product gospel blitz there are documentaries of the healing jesus campaigns we've had in many nations all across west africa different uh, documentaries you will enjoy them they will stir up evangelism evangelism in you and make you a pastor with compassion it will be a blessing to you so i think part of the ashes have they left Okay, I thought you had run away with the offerings. <laughs> so once again, today, it's my honor to hand over the microphone to our host, Pastor. Let's clap our hands for him. It's a, it's a seed. He's sown. We've been here. We've enjoyed the atmosphere. Lights are on, air conditioners are on, sound. Many, many things you may not know if you are not a pastor who organizes conferences. But it's expensive to be here. And it has been a blessing to us. And we say we really appreciate it. Very well. God bless you. All right. Thanks for coming. Uh, we'll see you tonight. And let's just pray over this offering. Thank you, Father, for everyone who has given. I know some of us has given out of our own lack, Father, and uh, we trust in you that you will bless us in this giving as well and that 
this offering will be used father for your kingdom and that many many fruit will grow from this offering thank you for this and bless everyone who were here i know we received a lot of information i think maybe some of us might feel we received too much but i know that through your holy spirit you will make this word a life in our lives and that we will start experiencing this anointing and start living it preaching it and sharing it wherever we go so thank you for that bless everyone this afternoon and we're looking so much forward to tonight and uh, expecting huge miracles there in jesus name amen
Stay.